Hi, welcome back to Henry John 120. I'm Jeff Clint, and this is a series of 120 videos of things that I learned as part of a Bachelor of Computer Science at the University of Regina. And today we're going to be following along on the last video. So if you haven't seen the last video, uh, it may be worth checking it out. Uh, not strictly speaking necessary, but uh, you want to start at the start on this one. Um, which is basically taking another step toward understanding calculus and this kind of area, of a branch of mathematics that has advanced our knowledge, uh, began the Industrial Revolution, and allowed for the solving of a whole bunch of problems that up until that point were completely unsolvable. And so today, today we're specifically going to be talking about integrals. And I mentioned integrals yesterday uh, without really going into detail on what they were. Uh, and so they're going to look like this, where this kind of S-like symbol, uh, usually some kind of a function in the middle. And if you don't know what functions are, you know, stop this video, go Google uh, Khan Academy or something and see if you can learn about functions really quickly and then come back or whatever, but you're going to be at a loss if you don't know what functions are. But there's going to be a function in the middle here, and then this kind of dt uh, at the back, or d, it might be dx or d of something. And so uh, that's generally what they're going to look like. Uh, and it's, it's just worth pointing out that this is kind of the second video on the topic. Uh, if you are actually taking a degree uh, in computer science or math or whatever, uh, and you started to learn about uh, calculus, well, first of all, you'd be nowhere near learning about integrals by the second day. Uh, the first day is usually they give you the kind of course syllabus. Uh, they kind of describe the kinds of things you'll be learning. You know, we've already given you the fundamental theorem of calculus, and now we're going to give you this. But it's worth pointing out that. This is just purely a bird's eye view of how integrals work. And you're not going to get a full understanding of it in 15 or whatever minutes. Uh, you're, if you really want to grok how integrals work and how you can kind of fit integrals into your problem solving in general, you're going to have to solve a lot of problems concerning them. We're going to give you a little bit of hints on how to do that today. But it's just worth pointing out, again, that you know, you're not going to be that good at it after watching two videos. You really want to practice, 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 practice and solve many different kinds of problems involving integrals from many different areas of mathematics and other areas. Uh, and, you know, just learn bit by bit, bring your knowledge up piece by piece until you can actually make it usable to you. Uh, but the, the second step towards getting to that point is kind of understanding what they are. And we'll get into that as we go through. So we mentioned it, but we didn't define it. Uh, and so we didn't, or rather we did define them, but we define them only in terms of things you don't understand, i.e. derivatives. And there are many ways of looking at what is an integral, how does it work. Uh, probably the easiest way to kind of get your hands on it and to, even without getting a full understanding, start to use them uh, is to uh, go to a website like integrals.wolfram.com, which I'm going to pull Not sure if you can see the screen here. Try to make the font bigger. Oh, maybe it's not going to let me here. So we have a uh, Wolfram is a uh, math website. It allows you to uh, plug in a whole bunch of kinds of questions. In specific, integral.wolfram.com allows you to solve in er, integrals. And if you see on the screen, I'm not sure if you can see very well. We have that little S-like symbol then a field that you can enter stuff in, and then dx at the end. The dx is mostly just syntax at this point. It kind of helps you to understand that you're dealing with integrals. So let's just plug in an example number in here. So 1. And we hit enter. So it calculates our integral of the kind of integral 1 dx is x. Well, that's a kind of interesting thing we've pulled out here. So we've already got our first integral that we've seen the result of. And even without knowing what they are or how they're computed, you now know that the integral of 1x or 1dx is equal to x. Let's try another one. Turn this click there. There we go. 2. So the integral of 2 dx. Hit the enter button and it gives us the integral of 2 dx is equal to 2x. Now, isn't that strange that there's already this kind of pattern that you're beginning to see, even without understanding what an integral is? Now, 
Now, unfortunately, uh, Wolfram didn't actually give us the exact right answer for that kind of question. Uh, since we are dealing uh, with this specific kind of integral, the real answer is wolf x plus a constant c. Um, and so that's unfortunate that the website kind of misled us a little bit. But it kind of gives you a clue that there's a pattern there anyway. In fact, there is that pattern. There is patterns in the relationship between our answer for what the integral is equal to and what we feed into the integral itself. And these patterns, like a lot of other things in nature, uh, can be understood. And you can simplify them in general rules that you can deduce by mathematical induction, going back to the mathematical induction video, uh, or other means. You can usually prove the relationships between the integral or antiderivative in this case, of this function, um, and the integral of that function. What are some other examples we could write down? Let's look at x is equal to 1 over 2 x squared plus c. And so this is just another thing you probably think to plug into this Wolfram alpha, that x x is kind of usually our variable that can, can vary, I guess. Uh, it's, it's the variable dx is related to x. If d, if there was another variable after d, and you plug that variable into the middle there, then you would, again, get different results. And so you can keep plugging kind of different functions of x into this website, or, or, or in general, keep coming up with them, and it'll give you a result for either case. Uh, but is there another way of understanding what exactly is this relationship about? Um, well, actually, again, there's a couple of different ways you can describe it. You can describe it entirely in terms of things called Riemann sums. But I don't want to get into Riemann sums because they're kind of complicated. And we don't have a lot of time today. So we, just if you want to understand a deeper level, Google Riemann sums and integrals, and it'll kind of give you a better lesson. You can define it in terms of things like speed or rates uh, between things, like speed, or more specifically, velocity. So if you're driving at a, a value around So this is your time axis, and this is your velocity axis. And you're driving at 100 kilometers an hour for one hour. If you take some part of this trip, then the relationship between your velocity and the integral of that velocity is the distance that you traveled during that time. Neat, huh? Similarly, any uh, function that you can define, again, that's continuous and differentiable, uh, the area under that function, when graphed out, is going to be the integral of the, that function over that region. And interestingly, this is equally true of functions that are not merely straight lines. If you have a curve, the function of, the, or the, whatever function generates this curve, the area under this curve, you can compute by taking the integral of that function from the region that you're curious about. Similarly, if you're really clever, you can define uh, integrals in terms of volume or surface area, uh, as long as you know the shape involved. And there are probably other ways with other rates that you could define them as. But the important thing to know is that for whatever function generates this curve, This integral is going to define the area under that curve. And we'll get into what these A and B mean in a moment. So there are two types of integrals we're talking about. There are what's called indefinite integrals.
and then there are definite integrals. And as you can probably guess from the last graph, they're related to whether or not you've defined the endpoints on your graph in the region that you want to take the area of. If you have, you'll probably get something like this, right? A to B, some curve that's defined, or that defines the area underneath. Then that area is equal to the de definite integral. of course, find out what this is in relation to what this function is. And similarly, for this, we don't have endpoints defined. And so it's just a general solution that it then usually has a constant associated with it. So looking at the indefinite integrals, remember the last video, uh, we had this capital F, uh, where the derivative of that capital level F, or capital number, or capital letter F, uh, was related to the integral uh, kind of expressed in a different way. Well, this is, kind of gives you another way to look at that. Because what this capital level, or capital F, means is the integral of F on an indefinite integral. And the solution to this indefinite integral of the function of F of X is this capital F, F this antiderivative of F plus a constant. Uh, there's a cute little comic that XKCD uh, has that really helps to remind you of this constant, and I'm going to link to that. Uh, but it's worth pointing out that when you're dealing with indefinite integrals, this constant is going to be necessary to put on. Now, for definite integrals, definite integral from A to B, from on, on, remember we're talking about a graph from A to B, from a domain, from A to B, and it's going to be the area under this curve from A to B, is going to be equal to the antiderivative at B, minus the antiderivative at A. It's kind of hard to draw that, uh, but you can kind of imagine that once you know how to compute these antiderivatives and kind of come up with the answer in the indefinite case, that you just kind of compute the one from, from generally, and then compute the other generally, and then subtract the two of them. You can even sub subtract the C's from each other, but they just cancel out. And there are various rules for solving these integrals of functions. The easiest to remember is probably if you go from b to b, or from any number to that same number, it's equal to zero. Simple enough. The next rule to kind of keep in mind chicken scratch there, but uh, if you have the integral of x plus g of x over dx, this is going to be equal to the integral of f of x dx plus the integral of g of x dx. 
So you can kind of use this to break apart uh, combinations of, say, polynomials, uh, so that you can solve each piece individually. And the, the kind of smaller your integral gets, probably the easier it's, easier it's going to be to solve it. Now, polynomials uh, with one term, so the form x to the n dx, are one of the easier things to solve. It's 1 over n plus 1 times x to the n plus 1 plus c. But n plus 1 is in the uh, uh, denominator here. Uh, so, is that the right term? Yeah, right. Either way, it's in the bottom. Uh, and so n can't be negative 1. We'll get into y in a moment here, if we've got time. And that's we're kind of running out of space. Let's in fact just check how much space we have. Oh, we got lots. And uh, so, while this is happening, what, let's just take a look at an example of that. So, x to the third dx is equal to 1 over 4 x to the fourth plus c. See, we have n in this case was 3, so n plus 1 is 4, n plus 1 is 4, and so the integral, indefinite integral of x to the 3 dx is equal to 1 over 4 x to the 4 plus c. So if you have a curve from, say, 0 to 1, the area under this curve, if this is a cubic function, is 1 over 4 x4, where x is equal to 1, minus 1 over 4 x equal to 0, 4, this is 1 over 4 times 1, is equal to 1 over 4, is the area under a cubic curve. Now this is already, if you remember in high school, you probably graphed lots of these cubic curves. But you probably didn't or weren't ever told the area under them. And this is just one example of a curve that you now know the area under from one range to another. Again, why is it this minus this? Because antiderivative on one side minus the antiderivative on the other, where each of these are equal to the indefinite integral, which is over here. Now remember that I said that you don't want to have n equal to minus 1. So let's look at what happens when n is equal to minus 1. We have 1 over x. So 1 over x is a special kind of derivative because it's not equal to that last formula. It has a different formula. That is ln, this ln function of the absolute value, i.e. x is always positive, uh, plus c. So you may remember this if you saw our earlier uh, video on the exponential function and what it means for there to be uh, this ln function of x. Uh, and so this is a way of relating what this function means to what integrals are and how they work. Because suddenly you can, def you can know what this is by taking this integral of 1 over x and vice versa. You can know what this is if you can find a reliable means of computing these ln uh, values. There's also a related integral which is e to the x dx, which is equal to e to the x plus c. Now, what is e? Again, e is the base of this logarithm. Remember, we, we defined this as a logarithm function in terms of some number. So this is log of e x. And that same e is the same e here. 
that the integral of e to the x is also e to the x. This e is kind of a special number. Uh, it's uh, worth knowing about purely on this basis alone, because it allows us to solve other exponential functions uh, fairly easily. Um, I'm not going to show you how, but it's a related uh, integral to this. Uh, and so we'll be able to solve those problems once we know this, uh, that, and, and kind of how to transform our problems using exponential functions to this one, which I'm not going to get into in this video. And you probably learned a lot of trigonometry in high school. You probably learned a whole bunch of seemingly useless uh, connections between sine and cosine, tangent and other uh, trig functions. And so this should be kind of a shock. Because suddenly we have these integrals to give us new ways of connecting this knowledge that we have. And so if we can define things in terms of these kind of trig integrals, uh, or find the area under a curve, for example, that is defined by this cosine function uh, between different parts of the, the curve, again, this is something that's going to be valuable to us. Uh, and so suddenly we, we can know the area underneath all sorts of trig uh, relationships. Uh, again, I'm it's possible to get from this knowledge to a lot of more complicated knowledge, but this is the first er, one step towards that. If you can solve kind of arbitrary integrals involving trig relationships, you can get quite far. And that rabbit hole goes quite deep. There are other means of solving integrals, such as the substitution rule, which I'm not going to get into here, but there are many, many rules and tricks and heuristics and ways of solving integrals that I'm not going to have time to get into, but are nevertheless useful for some class of integral. Uh, and it's worth knowing that once you have an integral, uh, there may be someone who knows how to solve it. And so again, what is an integral? It's the area under that curve. So there's going to be a lot of work in, involved with learning the relationship between areas under curves and the curves themselves. Uh, and thankfully we have, again, tools like Wolfram Alpha and Wolfram Integrator uh, to help us find these relationships. It's also worth pointing out there are more complicated types of integrals, such as the path integrals or the curve integrals. Uh, I don't know how to use those very use those kinds of integrals very well, but it's worth pointing out that they exist. There's probably even more complicated versions out there. Uh, and remember when I pointed out in the last video where f has to be continuous and differentiable? Suppose you have a discontinuous f. You could have, you couldn't find the area under this whole thing. But what you could do is you could find the integral over the ranges where it's defined. And so that might be a way of splitting up your problem, of kind of finding this integral and then finding this integral and adding them together. That's kind of a useful thing to know how to do. And if I had more time, I'd actually start plotting out uh, more examples other than just x to the 3 of curves and the area underneath. Uh, but again, we've already gone on 20 minutes here. I don't want to get too far deep into it. Uh, but just so you know, uh, th this getting to this point would usually take a good part of the semester. And, and just knowing that there is this relationship between curves and the area underneath is a very powerful thing. If you do enough research, you can find out and can kind of learn specific curves and their areas, and learn this in relation to their integrals. Um, it's a very powerful tool for you to be able to have. Again, I'm not going to walk you through every single case, but just to know that this exists, this relationship exists. And going back to the last video, now you have a way of understanding what derivatives are, because the derivative is going to be the thing. Let's review. Whatever this is, however derivatives work, they're going to relate our initial function to the integral of that function. So for example, remember we had x to the fourth, 1 over 4. However derivatives are going to work, the derivative of this is going to be x to the third. It's our original function. So we'll get into how derivatives work a little bit more in the next video. 
Uh, but if you have any questions of how integrals work, or would like an example uh, solved for you, I can't solve all integrals for you, but I can definitely solve some of them. Um, feel free to ask anywhere where this video is posted. Do you have any questions from the audience today? No? Okay. And uh, as usual, there should be a Bitcoin donation address at the bottom here, uh, somewhere. Uh, and uh, so that you can fund our whiteboard marker supply uh, and help keep this video series going. And uh, hope you enjoy. See you in the next video.